Something I do want to touch on, though, and I think you could add a lot of value to our audience, choosing the correct business name. You chose Codebusters. I love how many ideas like the Ghostbusters, you're breaking codes. You've already explained how coding may not be as hard as we perceive it to be. There are these tools online. What was going on in your brain when you chose that name? Man, to be honest, like the brand of Codebusters is so important for me. And every single word and every single letter on the website and all our communication, this is basically the reflection of our spirit. I wanted to build a brand which will cause some emotions. I wanted people to recognize that with code, right? So we're kind of, we're breaking the paradigm, we're breaking the pattern, and we want to be bold, you know? We want to be like a bit of rebels in the industry. We want to show people, lead by example, that in 2024, you can build software and you can launch startup in a different way. And I wanted to put this into the into the name of the of the brand as well. And with K in the beginning, you know, it makes it a little bit strange, unusual, like, okay, why it's like that? And somehow, like, yeah, it's really sticky. People love it. I love it myself. I'm proud to represent this brand. And uh, yeah, I also thank you so much for, for noticing. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, the show notes are on fire right now. He was kind enough to fill out a thorough podcast information sheet for all my podcast hosts aspiring out there. This is a tool that I implement all my coaching with the clients, this podcast information sheet. He gives me his bio. He gives me the areas that he's really looking forward to talking on. And that helps me lead a great conversation. So far in the notes, how to build with no knowledge in codes, systemizing everything. Why the opposite of what entrepreneurship was became a reality for him. And now we just talk about choosing the correct name. It's so important. I even, with this podcast, it started out as what it's really like to be an entrepreneur. I don't know if you're one of those original mm -hmm. listeners where, yeah, it says what the podcast is about, but it's very wordy. It's long. There's no social media handles that are that long to even get. Had to reinvent myself. That entrepreneur show, it's kept guys like Lev listening. So I yeah. appreciate that. Before we find out which entrepreneur he will sit down with in history, because he knows that question's coming since he <laughs> listens, I want to touch on the last piece here you gave me. Advice for startups and founder coaching. What can you offer us? Entrepreneurs, although the summer flew by, we have a stop in Indonesia I've been saving just to cap off an incredible summer here on That Entrepreneur Show. Gleb, thank you so much for taking some time after we just learned was a hell of a day for him. Right. Vincent, thank you so much for having me. As I said before, I've been a fan of the pod for a while. Thank you so much for all the content you're putting out there. And I'm thrilled to be here. Hey, well, I'm thrilled to have you. And thank you so much for the kind words. If it's your first time viewing or tuning in today, welcome to That Entrepreneur Show. This is the podcast where I bring successful small business owners and entrepreneurs to the forefront to not only share their success, but share the challenging times. You see him, he has been working all day, 9 p.m. his time, 9 a.m. my time. We're making it work. Some right. areas we're going to discuss today, right up his alley, building a remote company, the struggles and challenges of being a founder, what it's like settling in Bali, no code and product trends. That's something I want to start out on because I'm not that familiar in this area. Let's talk about the no code product trends. Sure. I believe we live in a time when it's never been easier to launch a product. And by product, I mean like an app, mobile app or web app, any kind of service or platform. Let's call them a startup or a digital app for existing business. So there are technologies which low code and no code, which actually do exactly what they mean. Like you don't have to code to build apps. There are some templates and there is an environment where you can use predefined uh, components, right? to make it more like drag and drop plug and play architecture, which enables entrepreneurs and businesses all around the world to build more and better products or to build them faster. This technology is one of the biggest trends in product development and every day I'm fascinated on what you can do. And the same comes with AI and automation, right? So basically before that, if you want to launch a product, you have to hire a team with front end, back end, with like world-class experts to also like really bring all these things together. And right now it's a collection of predefined tools and templates which you need to connect to each other. 
but the challenge here so we already learned like from engineering point of view it's getting easier but from business point of view it's getting more and more competitive right because more and more people all over the world are indie hackers solopreneurs like people who listen to this podcast they have access to these tools and here you need to stand out with the orig original product idea like something which solves problems of users and something users are willing to pay money for so this is what I'm doing on daily basis, and I'm super excited about this. It's really incredible time in software development and product development, and I'm happy to be like on the frontier of that. Well, I can see the passion coming right through the screen, and that's what I can only hope for with each guest I brought on. Let's now transition to how you use that to build some of your empire, your, some stuff you're working on right now. Sure. To start with, first of all, I'm doing this for clients, right? So people come with us with an idea and they say, we have a limited budget, we have a limited timeline. Let's build like a product which are going to work on these functions. Either it's a new startup or it's something which is already inside existing business. So this is what we do. We help entrepreneurs and business owners to really bring their product visions to life. And inside the company, we try to automate everything. So we're using the technology, which we're also selling to our customers also ourselves, like we're eating our own dog food mm -hmm. and automating something like invoicing, hiring, lead generation, outreach. It's incredible. So uh, my co-founder, he's genius. He's automating everything. We have workflows for every single thing which you otherwise would do manually. So we're really like walking the talk here and as well experimenting a lot. If, if we think like, okay, this process takes a little bit of our time. And we need to copy paste information. We need to switch between different tools. Yeah. Let's build our own tool. Let's see how it works. It's so accessible right now. And I believe like for the future, because you mentioned Empire, I really see this developing long-term as something where I can have my own so-called startup factory, like a venture factory, and really produce these apps, again, with the validation of real processes and potentially sell them as well. I love the motivation and it's not an overnight thing, everyone. It's going to take time. He's already thinking 10 years into the future. 100%. He also just touched on many different areas that are involved in these systems and processes. When you're in the beginning in entrepreneurship, you're wearing every single hat. He's here to make it a little bit easier for you. Be sure to stick around to the end of the show because we're going to find out exactly how to get on his calendar if this feels like an aligned fit. Something else I really want to talk about, as it's something that I have struggled with, the struggles and challenges of being a founder. You're starting with no credibility. Again, you have to wear all of those hats. What were the biggest challenges for you? I would say the biggest challenge for me is uncertainty, right? I had a career in product management. I was working for leading companies in Europe, and I was used to the fact that I know exactly what's going to happen next month, right? I'll have my paycheck and then I have the roadmap, which I'm going to follow. And if I follow it right, I'll get promoted and then I have more money. Right now, it's the opposite. It's complete uncertainty and it comes from, from day to day, it's different, right? So sometimes we say like we have good days, we have bad days. When you're a founder, you have good minutes or bad hours, you know, it can change during the day. Then one day you think, okay, when we're getting there, the revenue is growing and the next month you are broke again and then you start over. Yeah. I would say this amount of uncertainty on the one hand and on the other hand, you also know your potential, right? I know that I'm designer of my own life. I know all the opportunities there. And it's like, it feels so big. I don't even know where to start because all this potential and all this opportunity is also an uncertainty. How to get there? I never done sales before. I never done marketing before. Now I have to do like at least 10 discovery calls every single week so I can make the pipeline. I need to send so many emails and create so much content, which I haven't done before as well. And it's all uncertainty. And with every single experiment you make, you start from zero. And that's and, the know, truth. <laughs> exactly. And then like one month later, you just realize it's not working. You have to start with something else. And then you start from zero again. Um, I love it. You know, I think in long term, and I also feel like, I feel how much I grow. I feel that with every experiment, I learned so much. But man, it's so difficult. Yeah, you have to take those failures and turn them into lessons learned and keep moving it forward. The relentless work that goes on behind the scenes. He touched on the content making, the marketing. That's something I've always, I could say, kind of sucked at. I 
Just put something out and that's what's most important. I try to use that example for people. Just have to put something out. Who cares if it's not perfect? There will never be a perfect product in anything you do. I can promise you, whether it's me writing a book, me putting out this podcast show, there's always something that can be improved and you look at that product and then you apply it to the next. I love the vulnerability you're showing with behind the scenes work here because that's what can relate to. I'm hoping so many people listening on and inspire them to not give up of course, that paycheck is great on Fridays, but again, you're not the designer of your own life. And I love how you put that there. You're in the right. driver's seat. You can choose to work as hard as you want. You can choose how many emails and things to send. And the best part about it is if you're not good at it, like I wasn't in areas, you can outsource it and find some people to make your magic come to life. Just like we have him here dedicating his life to helping people streamline what seems to be a never ending processes in entrepreneurship. What else do you love about being on your own? We talked about some of the harder parts. What else do you really love about being in the driver's seat? I really love the fact that even though I have to work a lot and I'm working way more than I used to work when I was employed, I love the freedom which it gives me. And the point which you also mentioned about hiring and outsourcing, mm -hmm. I remember there was a moment that, for example, I couldn't check my phone for, for a day or intentionally or unintentionally, I know that the work is still going, right? If you build a strong team and if you really apply, um, how to say, you define the workflows which can function without you. This is such a such a rewarding feeling to know that like you build something which doesn't depend on you. And I think this is the one of the biggest shifts from selling your time to building the business, right? From being the the car craftsman to being a businessman. So I remember this moment very vividly and I remember how good it felt and I really enjoyed it. And then it comes with scalability, right? So we're just more and more what I'm doing myself, I'm going to outsource. So this is what I really, really like among many, many other things. But this is something which is very tangible, something which I really, really feel. Yes. When we talk about like unlimited potential, yes, but this is something in the future. When we talk about like unlimited reward, like in terms of money, which we can earn, right? This is also something in the future. And it's a lot of work before that as well is required, right? But something which you can feel has direct influence on my life straight away. I live in Bali and I know like if I want to go surfing right now, I can do it. And then I catch up, let's say on the weekends. Or I feel like today I want to work 16 hours, not because I have to, but because I really feel like I'm on fire and I want to deliver the value. I love it. And that's how you know you're in the right place in entrepreneurship when you don't mind working 16 hours. We've all met our friend Burnout. So that's why he mixes in surfing and some other great things to break up his day. And he's just made another great example. Okay, I'm not going to be hard on myself today. Tomorrow's going to be my work day. Putting your brain in those zones, learning how to do that makes all the difference. Something I do want to touch on though, and I think you could add a lot of value to our audience, choosing the correct business name. You chose Codebusters. I love how many ideas like the Ghostbusters, you're breaking codes. You've already explained how coding may not be as hard as we perceive it to be. There are these tools online. What was going on in your brain when you chose that name? Man, to be honest, like the brand of Codebusters is so important for me. And every single word and every single letter on the website and all our communication, this is basically the reflection of our spirit. I wanted to build a brand which will cause some emotions. I wanted people to recognize that with code, right? So we're kind of, we're breaking the paradigm, we're breaking the pattern and we want to be bold. You know, we want to be like a bit of rebels in the industry. We want to show people, lead by example, that in 2024, you can build software and you can launch startup in a different way. And I wanted to put this into the, into the name of the, of the brand as well. And with K in the beginning, you know, it makes it a little bit strange, unusual, like, okay, why is it like that? And somehow, like, yeah, it's really sticky. People love it. I love it myself. I'm proud to represent this brand. And uh, yeah, I also thank you so much for, for noticing. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, the show notes are on fire right now. He was kind enough to fill out a thorough podcast information sheet for all my podcast hosts aspiring out there. This is a tool that I implement all my coaching with the clients, this podcast information sheet. He gives me his bio. He gives me the areas that he's really looking forward to talking on. And that helps me lead a great conversation. So far in the notes, how to build with no knowledge and codes, systemizing everything. 
why the opposite of what entrepreneurship was became a reality for him. And now we just talked about choosing the correct name. It's so important. I even, with this podcast, it started out as what it's really like to be an entrepreneur. I don't know if you're one of those original mm -hmm. listeners where, yeah, it says what the podcast is about, but it's very wordy. It's long. There's no social media handles that are that long to even get. Had to reinvent myself. That entrepreneur show, it's kept guys like Gleb listening. So I yeah. appreciate that. Before we find out which entrepreneur he will sit down with in history, because he knows that question's coming since he <laughs> listens, I want to touch on the last piece here you gave me. Advice for startups and founder coaching. What can you offer us? Launching a startup or any kind of digital products right now, it's more about the mindset. As, as I said before a few yeah. times, technology is something secondary. About the mindset. And I advocate to validate idea as soon as possible without any initial investment. So for every massive product idea, there is 24-hour version. For example, you want to build a platform. Try to mimic the same service with a spreadsheet. Just make phone calls, use a spreadsheet on Google Sheets or Airtable, and see how you can match it. Or you want to build a platform which will say like video hosting. Try to make a very simple landing page and put like Google Drive behind it. Something which like I think maybe you and me, we are kind of still acquainted with this, but younger people. Uh, they don't like to make phone calls, right? Because they prefer to text and they are so used to communication. Yep. But this is also an opportunity to make a phone call. The point is to validate your idea with some real users before you build software. If you have a few people who have some interest, invite them to the private chat, let's say on Slack or in WhatsApp, communicate with them, really go deeper, go to the trenches, find out what are their pains, what they complain about. And when you have the idea validated, then come to me or do it yourself or do it with some other agency. And only then when you're like, when you're crystal clear of which problems you're solving and for who, then it's time to invest money in build software. That's my advice. Incredible advice. I'm so glad I asked you giving a lights out show all day, my man. Now, which entrepreneur throughout history, dead or alive, would you choose to sit down with to pick their brain? I would choose a person and which I think most of people don't associate with entrepreneur. And this is Arnold Schwarzenegger. Okay, let's talk about it. Brand builder. I'm, I admire him so much because he is the same as me. He's an immigrant. So he came to another country when he was young and he crushed it in all aspects of his life. Fitness-wise, actor, entrepreneur, and politician. And when I think about like truly inspiring person, he is the one who comes to mind because he really crushed it four times and this is something which i'm also like which i want to do because i believe in this holistic growth and something which i'm really passionate about i want to be great in sports i want to be great in surfing i want to be great in business i want to also be great as someone who gives service to other people and who knows maybe acting is also somewhere on the horizon you know hey i love uh, maybe it podcasting you know um so it'd be great and he has this like personality, people know him, but yeah, is he an athlete or he's a governor or is he a businessman? He's just himself. And that's why I would really love to, you know, have a chat with him. It's inspiring because he inspires you to never give up your next chapter in life. Even if your chapter closes for him, it was bodybuilding. That doesn't mean the world's got to crumble. You chase a new passion, chase a new dream. You crushed it, Gleb. Thank you so much for taking the time all the way from Indonesia to join that entrepreneur show here in Florida. Where can we find all the great work you do online? The best way to connect with me is on LinkedIn and also on our website. So we put it in the show notes. All right, everyone, you know the deal in the show notes. Danica is anxiously awaiting you to reach out to her to get connected with any guests that I bring on the show. All info is sitting with her. So please, if you love what you heard today, do not hesitate to find him online and reach out. Say hello. And of course, all the value you heard today. This is just the tip of the iceberg with what he has to offer. Be sure to follow us on all social media at That Entrepreneur Show. We are streaming on all podcast platforms at the same name, That Entrepreneur Show. I am at Vincent A. Lancey on all social and on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to me there for some video clips of this show a few weeks after we go live. But with that, we are signing off today, 9.22 a.m., 9.22 p.m. Thanks so much, right. Cliff. Thank you so much, Vincent.